Welcome back, everyone. This is Frank Tamora with The Last Chronicles of Planet Earth. This is my documentary that I wrote, and it's very, very current. You'll see the March 7th, 2013 edition. So if you're at my YouTube channel, please go over to my website, which you can get there by going to, and let me bring this up for you. This is my older site now. Keep that in mind, BibleProphecyMan.com. And when you're there, you'll find a link, and that link will take you to my new site, which is the endtimesresearchministry.com. When you're there, in either one of the sites, you'll be able to click this link and download my book today for free. And so let me get right into the prophecy. And many times I'm talking about Zechariah, because Zechariah told us what about Jerusalem, what we should be doing uh, according to God's word, considering the nation of Israel and the Jewish people. And of course, if you want to do God's will, the question I would have for you, if you really consider yourself a Christian and following God's word, then what are you going to do when God tells you uh, about Israel and how you should be towards Israel? Because it's going to affect your eternity. There's no question about it. And we, you do not want the curse of God to fall on you if you don't follow or if you're not on the side with the Lord. At least I would think that anybody in the right mind would want to do those things which the Lord wants from us. So one of the things that we do know from Zechariah 12, 3, or 2 and 3 is this, Behold, I will make Jerusalem a, a cup of trembling, Unto all the people round about, when they shall be in siege, both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. Okay, everyone. All that burden themselves with it will be cut into pieces. Very, very direct from the Lord. You mess with Israel, you mess around with Jerusalem, you'll be cut into pieces. And then it goes on to say, though all the people of the earth are gathered together against it. So we know that as we get closer and closer to the beginning of the seven-year tribulation, the last week of those 490 years that God spoke to Daniel about, there's only seven years left to deal with the nation of Israel to sanctify God's name to show God is going to sanctify his name. He has been through the nation of Israel, and he's going to accomplish all of the prophecies to sanctify his name uh, through the, the seven-year period uh, in the book of Revelation that we see, the unveiling of what's going to happen in the future. And so we do know that the whole world is going to come against Israel. We see that happening yesterday. For example, I put on a YouTube or a, a video that was posted on YouTube that a university gave about the U UN, the United Nations, and their stance against Israel. And I put that up to show you a, a portion, or just a, if you will, just a, a needlepoint of what the world is doing against Israel in relation to Zechariah chapter 12. And the UN is no doubt coming against Israel. And the UN are all the nations, all right? And we're seeing, little by little, all the nations are becoming very, very uh, agitated over Israel because of the failed peace talks. And of course, I'll be talking about this a little bit later. So, but let, let me go on now to give you just a little of information so you can connect the dots between Zechariah 12, verses 2 and 3 and what's actually happening in the world news. Now here is a, re a report that five million Dutch have a uh, satanic view of Israel. And I'll go there for you. Uh, all of these links will be at my uh, site. So when you click the link, you'll be able to go right over and get that link. So let me bring, that, bring the link up for you so you can see what's going on here. And uh, of course, the Albert Foundation study and it showed that 39% of the Dutch believe Israel is exterminating the Palestinian Arabs. Let me get rid of this here. It'll come back up in a second. I don't know why it's doing that, but it is what it is. Now, we, let me just read a little bit of this. It says, yesterday, the major Dutch news, 
I'm not even going to pronounce the Dutch standard here, but it was published in an article by the Israeli anti-Semitism expert, Dr. Manfred Gerstenfeld, in which he wrote that there are uh, currently more people with neo-Nazi views in the Netherlands than the number of Dutch collaborators with the Nazis during the Second World War. That's quite a bit of people. Now, Gerstenfeld wrote, at least five million Dutch have a satanic view of Israel. This can be concluded from a study undertaken by the University of the Belleled Field of the German Social Democratic Frederick Albert Foundation in 2011, and this study was ignored in the Netherlands. And in the study, authors asked people if they believe that Israel is conducting an ex extermination war against the Palestinian Arabs. Now, According to this article, it said about 39% of the Dutch polled answered in the affirmative. Now take a look at this because this is where it even gets worse. Already in 2003 in Euro Barometer study, in other words, the Euro nations, there are 27 nations in the European Union of which is the revived Roman Empire of which God told Daniel in chapter 2 and chapter 7 that was going to come in the last days and they're already here. And this is who they're talking about, the Euro, the western leg of the old Roman Empire. In this Euro barometer study, it was asked which countries are dangerous to world peace. And Israel came in second place after Iran. And of course, Iran continually says, I've been posting all kinds of information, I did this again yesterday, that Ahmadinejad wants to destroy Israel. And so they're saying that Israel is one of the that it is the second nation of all the nations that they're concerned about. So you actually, there is no doubt that you can see uh, shades of the Zechariah prophecy. There's, there's no question about it. Now, let me just give you a little bit uh, of a thanks. I got this American flag running here, and I'll let you read this when you get to my site, but just let me say this. We should give thanks to all of the countries, every single one of the countries who have helped the United States when Sandy hit on the East Coast. You remember that? Uh, well, in case you don't really read the news, I'll just put this right here. Sandy was a, a storm that ravaged the Eastern Coast, and uh, as it came in, it pounded the East Coast. It ravaged our East Coast, leaving dead, homelessness, and pure disaster. And in many parts, it's still that way right now. And the government has uh, held up some funds to help these people, especially in New Jersey area, where there was uh, much, much damage that was done there. And so I want to give thanks to all of those nations who came in with their money, with their you know, people, the help, and whatnot. And uh, there's a list, to post the list to give thanks to every one of those nations. All right now, just keep in mind now, the United States considers Israel their best friend. Isn't that right? We hear this from Barack Obama all the time. But let me show you something. Here's the list now. Take a look at it. Here's Israel, they're number one. Number two, number three, number four, five, six. Oh, wait a minute, what happened? What happened? That's it. Yes, the list is complete. The only nation in the entire world, of all the nations in the U United Nations, the only nation who came to assist the United States and those people living on the eastern coast was Israel. The only nation. And you'll see why I'm bringing this up. Because there is no doubt in my mind that Barack Obama has said that he is a friend of Israel, but he's really stabbing Israel in the back. And I've proved this before, and I'm going to show you some more evidence of it right now. Now, Israel is, as I said, supposed to be the United States' friend. But what does Obama strive for? Now, is he striving for what God wants us to, to, in relation to do towards Israel, 
by the Lord's precepts or is he doing something else? This makes a difference between who a real Christian is or really somebody who's just jabbering at the mouth and he's really not a Christian. You'll know them by what they do in their life, demonstrating are they doing the things of God or are they doing the opposite? Well, obviously, Barack Obama is doing the opposite. Now, it's very important, and this is why I'm bringing this out to you, and I bear with me for those people who have been with me some, for some time, they know this. But for those that are new, this is extremely important because wherever you are, if your nation is coming against Israel, like Zechariah said that I just showed you, you're going to be cut into pieces. The nation, your nation is going to either see devastation by tornadoes, earthquakes, tsunamis, floods, uh, insect, pestilence, disease, whatever it is, it's coming. The curse of God is coming. We see this in Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. You can be blessed. You know how you can be blessed? Because where did Jesus Christ come from? He came out of Israel. The fulfillment of prophecy through the Virgin Mary brought on the liturgy all the way through until he was born. A virgin, from a virgin. And so you can be blessed by receiving Jesus Christ. But if you reject Jesus Christ, by all means, you're going to be rejected by God. And that's a curse. Now, in Joel chapter 3, verse 2, he says this, And I will also gather all the nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel. That's who he's talking about, Israel. So you'll know straight out. Whom they have scattered among the nations, and look at this in the yellow, parted my land. So guess what? Look up Jehoshaphat because this is where judgment happens. And anybody who tries to divide up Israel, they're going to go through judgment. Part of the curse. You, you do things coming against Israel, you're not blessing Israel, you're cursing Israel. And then again, here's Zechariah. And this is a repeat of what I just said, but I put it in the yellow. All that burden themselves will be cut into pieces in part of Zechariah's prophecy. You see that. And so when you come against Israel, when you try to divide Israel, when you try to separate the Jews from their own land, you fall under the curse. And whatever it takes, however it happens, the curse will fall on your nation, including Israel. Obviously, the United States, because Barack Obama, guess what? Now, I'm going to connect this other prophecy with this, and you're going to see why. Paul warned us that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 3 and 4, and we're seeing this right now. This is why I keep bringing it up. It says, For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. So at a time in history where Israel is talking peace and safety, at this time there's going to be destruction, right? And we know that even by scripture from Zechariah that uh, Jerusalem is going to be compressed or people are going to be coming against Jerusalem in the last days and are already starting to try to do this. But let me show you now, Obama considers a timeline for the Palestinian state because this involves the peace process because Obama is going to go over to the Middle East to talk peace. So you have... Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 3 and 4, encompassed in what's going on or what's going to happen in a few weeks in the Middle East as they start to try to revive these stalled peace talks that have been stalled now for almost, I believe it's almost three years. So let me just click on to this link, and we'll go over there, just take a second. A minute, as soon as it loads, we'll pull that down and I want to show you some things. You'll see Obama considers the timeline for the Palestinian state. And this is from Tel Aviv, from Israel. 
Even before formal negotiations begin, President Obama is considering a Palestinian Authority request to put a schedule on the implementation phases of a future Palestinian state. A senior PA, this would be the Palestinian Authority negotiator, told the WND. Now, the negotiator said that the PA asked that the U.S. back its request to impose a timeline on any decisions made during the expected Israeli-Palestinian talks. So there you go, 1 Thessalonians 5.3, calling for peace and safety. The PA does not want to wait for all issues to be resolved before seeing phased Israeli withdrawals from the sections of the strategic West Bank, the negotiator said. Now, Obama will visit Israel later this month, and the WND reported Obama's planned visit already has secured Israeli and Palestinian pledges to restart the so-called land for peace talks. Remember, if you divide the land, well, that's what Obama's going for, and according to the informed Palestinian and the Israeli officials. The officials disclosed the Obama administration told both sides the talks would be aimed at creating a Palestinian state in what is known as the 1967 borders, and this is very important, meaning an Israeli retreat from some of the strategic West Bank and possibly some eastern section of Jerusalem. Does Zechariah 12.3 come into mind? And does the, the prophecies in Joel chapter 3 come into mind? Because they're certainly the leaders of the United States and their backers are going over to Israel to do exactly that, to separate the Jews from their own land. And when you're talking about the section of East Jerusalem, you're talking about the section where the Dome of the Rock is, where it's the third most holy site for the Muslim, and that is the same site of which the first and the second temple used to be on, and that's where the third temple is going to be on. And so Barack Obama, the governor of the United States, is burdening themselves over Jerusalem, and the United States is going, they've already been under the curse, and now that you know that Obama is going back, and he, this is what he's going to press for, let me just warn everybody who lives in the United States, you better start watching the weather, watch uh, extreme heat that will be coming up, watch uh, your crops, Watch, I mean, whatever, it, whatever is going to happen, whether it be from storms, all of the uh, disasters that could befall a nation, start watching what's going on, especially at the time uh, that the Obama administration is over in Israel. Because every time one of the leaders of a country goes over and tries to separate Israel from their land, some disaster happens. Now, they're talking about it this week. It just came out, right? And this week, as they're talking about going over there, guess what? The East Coast gets slammed with one of the worst storms in the history of the United States. Snow, ice, sleet, thunder in, in the snow, lightning in the snow, unbelievable occurrences that have devastated. Now, in the beginning, I talked about Sandy. Well, guess what? We got poundings of these massive waves. Now, when you watch ABC News tonight, they'll probably talk about it again because it's devastating the East Coast. It was yesterday, and it is again today. And so while they're even talking about going over and, and dividing the land, already the United States is getting slammed in an area that, we're, we're seeing in the East Coast. Where, where's Obama? He's on the East Coast. I mean, where's this thing hitting? Now, when you go into my book, you will see in my book that there is a, uh, uh, there is a, a section in the book about the God's curse and what has happened in the past. So I'm giving you this now because I know God's word and I know God's word does not go void. And when he says that he's going to do certain things to people who come against Israel and burden themselves over Israel, 
pay attention, raise the red flag, watch what's going on, watch what will happen when they are there because we have seen, again, uh, a, high, high, a very high percentage of natural disasters that strike the nations who uh, try to separate Israel from their own land, divide the land, and do those things that the Lord said not to do. So uh, I wanted to give this to you so that you'll understand uh, exactly what's going on. So now you have Obama considering this timeline, and of course the Palestinian state, they are, the Palestinians are, as you see in this picture that I have up from my book, uh, they are Phoenicia in the Old Testament, but they're modern-day Palestinians who are part of the Hamas, they're part of the Hezbollah, they're in the Gaza Strip, and of course we know that they're the modern-day Palestinians. Okay, I needed to point that out because there are certain nations that I'm going to be talking about today, and one of them is Egypt and the other one is Syria. So I wanted to point that out. Now, if you're new to prophecy, when you go to my site and you read uh, Psalm 83, at least verses 1 through 5, you will see that the nations here, all of these nations are going to come together and as a confederate, uh, confederate force, you will see that this confederate force right here in verse 4 and 5, it says, they have come, or they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may no more be in remembrance, for they have consulted together as one. All right, so we know that they're going to be coming against Israel, no doubt about it, but the most important part is who is it? Well, it's all of these nations, Syria, the Palestinians, Egypt, that's who I'm going to be talking about uh, right now. So in order to do that, and I also need to point what's going on with Syria because they are named in that Psalm 83. So th the Lord tells us what's going to happen to Syria. Now Syria has been an en enemy of Israel for a very long time. They're already under the curse. We're, si we're seeing now what happens to Syria because they've been saying that they're going to destroy Israel. And part of what's going on is that curse falling on Syria. Now, Jeremiah chapter 49, verses 24 through 27, talks about the destruction of uh, Syria. All right, And also, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 17, verse 1, it talks about the destruction of Damascus, which is the capital of Syria. The burden against Damascus. Behold, Damascus will cease from being a city, and it will be in a in a ruinous, and of course, one of the words was dropped out here when I was copying and pasting, but a ruinous heap, that's what it says. And so we know that some major, major disaster is going to befall Syria, and I've been warning about this. Now, some of my warnings, you'll see here this in green, here are some of my past warnings concerning Syria and Israel because I've been warning you what Syria has said in the past. Now this particular one, that warning that I posted many times before was from February 16, 2012. The IDF, Syria could attack Israel soon. It says the Jerusalem Post reported on uh, Thursday that there is there is a growing concern in the Israeli army that Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad could attack the Jewish state as pressure mounts for him to step down. Well, obviously the pressure is still mounting since that uh, February date, that February 16, 2012 date. Assad is currently facing a revolution in his own country. He still is a year later. That has been sought to quail uh, with brutal force, and he's killing his people. And now I believe that there's like 90,000 people who've died here. But look at this. It says, the situation has prompted the Arab League and the Western powers to consider injecting their own military forces into Syria with the aim of ending Assad's rule. But before that happens, Israeli military officials believe Assad would lash out at Israel. That's why I warned this last year. And both to divert Arab attention on the serious national struggle and to establish a lasting legacy for himself. So if they close it in, 
And obviously, since this article was written, they're definitely closing in. They're almost there now. They've already been bombing the Na Damascus. Now, in this article, this becomes very important because they, they point out the problem with the chemical weapons. What has made this prospect all the more worrying is that the recent reports, and you're going to see how this all ties in, so please stay with me, suggest Assad had been using chemical weapons against the Syrians' opposition, including civilians. If he attacks Israel, it is believed Assad would have no problem using those same weapons against the Jewish state. Now, again, I've warned many, many times. I gave a a presentation down in Palm Springs not long ago. And in that presentation, I talked about how you, you might as well perceive Bashar al-Assad as a cornered raccoon. And that when he can't move anymore, the only thing that he can do is lash out. And how is he going to lash out? Well, I've been warning he's going to lash out at Israel and hope that when he does, that just like this article talks about, the attention will turn away from him and turn towards Israel, who's attacking Syria. Now, there's another report that I've been warning about. Here's that one, and this was in September 6, 2012. The cornerstone cornered and desperate. Will Assad unleash a catastrophic chemical weapons attack against Israel? That's been the question for the past year and a half. And I've been warning about this. Now, in that warning, I pointed to this article, uh, which is the article that I just quoted from. But here is the quote from this September 6th article. And it says this, For experienced observers believe that President Assad may be plotting a surprise attack against Israel in a desperate attempt to distract attention away from his eternal troubles and transform himself into a hero across the Arab world. Again, and they're talking about, you know, here we go. Are, are they going to attack with the chemical weapons? Will Bashar al-Assad be seen as a hero if he attacks Israel? If, if they do attack Israel, and Israel engages in him, and the rest of the Arab world sees him as a... A martyr, there is a very, very likability that the Arab nations who see what happens to Assad may turn their attention, just like Assad wants, and fight against Israel, which would mean, no doubt, that we would see the fulfillment of Psalm 83, of all those nations in that psalm who come in against Israel. Now, let me bring you up to date now, because this is an article that I'm pulling up, and I, I took a picture of it because when we go to, let me get right to this article. This is from the Israeli site. And it is, uh, if you go to uh, Google Chrome, you'll be able to translate this from Hebrew into English. And this is what I did for us. But for the means of my uh, presentation here at the YouTube, uh, I put it up here so that when you go to my site, you'll be able to read it with no problem. But it says here, and every time I go to it, you'll see that when you scroll down, some of the words uh, will be translated into Hebrew. And this is one of the reasons why I'm going to go back uh, to my site here. There you go. Sorry about that. But we're back to my site. And here's that article. Israel preparing to strike Syria after U.S. pressure. Now, this is talking about, remember, I was warning about this, and now they're starting to really ratchet up the talk here in 2013. It says, U.S. are closely monitored in Syria and demand that Israel prepare for war. Call held between the U.S. Secretary of Defense and Defense Minister Barack, General Dempsey and the Ambassador Oren discussed only on the chemical weapons in Syria. So, again, here's the issue of possible war with Syria and the chemical weapons. Exactly what I've been warning about for the past year and a half. So, moving down into the article, it says, The U.S. demands that Israel prepare for war uh, with Syria. 
and we emphasize that this is the first time in many years that there will be meeting of the highest level of the military, the American security, Israeli, American serious allegations against the IDF, which is the Israeli Defense Force, for those of you who may not know, that the IDF is not taking seriously the danger of Syrian chemical weapons attack on Israel and not made it for and then um, it goes on, I just quoted the other portion of it. Defense Minister Ehud Barak Eglad heard that according to an American intelligence assessments have been by Hezbollah. Now Hezbollah is mentioned in Psalm 83, we'll, it's a breakdown, you'll see that in my book as well. But they're enemies of Israel and they're calling for the destruction of Israel. Uh, so have been by Hezbollah. Uh, certain quantities of chemical weapons in Syria. Now Israel has said that if they find out that the Hezbollah has chemical weapons, they are going to attack Syria, and they mean business. Now these developments are probably the main reason for making, on Tuesday morning, the Russian ambassador to the UN, his name is uh, Vedele Tai, or uh, Taz, Corin, or Corkin, is also the current president of the Security Council for March, warning that the imminent outbreak of war. I mean, what else do you need to know? Even in the, the Lord Jesus Christ told us in Matthew chapter uh, 24, verse 6, wars, rumors of wars. And in verse 7, he mentions nation against nation. There's going to be war. And, of course, we know Psalm 83. That's a war. So they're talking about the outbreak of war. In a separation between Israel and Syria, an early report or, or our sources. It says, Moscow and Jerusalem warn individually each other different reasons the possibility of an outbreak of war between Israel and Israel and Syria, and the separation in the border areas between the two countries due to the deteriorating security situation there rapidly. So, peace and security. What did the Lord tell us through Paul in 1 Thessalonians 5.3 when they're calling for peace and what? Peace and security. And we definitely see those nations lining up from the Psalm 83. And it may just spark the whole thing by these chemical weapons. Now, here is another article that I posted that was in Hebrew that I put up here at the post so that you'll be able to see it. Uh, Barak admitted assault in Syria. Iranian chief threatens. Now, Barak admits, when we say something, we mean it. Do not agree to new weapons systems transferred to Lebanon. Lebanon is one of the nations in the Psalm 83 war. Iran's army chief threatens. Look at it. Syria's response to the latest aggression will send the Zionist regime coma. In other words, destroy it. That's what it's saying. Put it out of its misery. Put them to sleep, if you will. That's what they're saying here. That's what Psalm 83 is all about. That's what the Lord shows us through Psalm 83. They're going to say these kinds of things. Destroy them so that their name doesn't exist anymore. Right? So going on, Defense Minister Ehud Barak broke the silence Israel about reports of the attack on Syria and applies today, Sunday, for attack. What happened in Syria a few days ago shows that when we say something, we mean it. Do not agree to new weapons systems transferred to Lebanon. Iranian and the, the Iranians and the Hezbollah in Lebanon. States are the only remaining members of Bashar al-Assad, the defense minister said at a conference in Munich. Assad's regime is coming to an, an end. And when it does, it will be to uh, be a severe blow to Iran and Hezbollah who will pay the price, Barack added. And so there's the main meat of this article, take it, is just we have three or four different nations who are named in the Psalm 83 that are coming together. They're worried about this new war breaking out because of chemical weapons 
These are the same things that I'm warning you about. Now, only God knows what, exactly how this war is going to start. But, there, but by what we're seeing with Syria coming to a, a, a close with that regime, something's going to happen very, very soon, and it might be over those chemical weapons. Very, very important to watch what's going on. Now, let's move on. Israel asked the UN to move the forces from the Golan, right? Keep in mind, you know, the United States is supposed to be really close with the, uh, the Israelis, the UN. Uh, obviously, the UN, a, a nation who's come against Israel, uh, more, more than any nation who is, uh, who's living today. And again, go and watch that video that I put up yesterday. So, we know that Israel is, uh, is marked, all right? So take a look at this article. Let me go right to it. Israel asked UN not to remove forces from the Golan. Now, Israel has approached the UN and the UNDOF, the multi-force charged with monitoring the ceasefire between Israeli and the Syrian troops on the Golan Heights, requesting that the forces' activity not be impaired due to the kidnapping of 21 peacekeepers by the Syrian rebels. So there's problems on the border. And this is one of the reasons why I believe also that there's war talk between Israel and Syria. And according to the report on the Israeli defense website, on Thursday, Israel also requested that the forces not be removed or their numbers reduced due to the kidnapping incident, which is considered the UN DOF's most serious since its establishment. The request comes after Croatia already began removing its soldiers from the border in April 2012 over concern for their lives. In other words, UN chicken out. Run for your lives. Run for your lives. Let Israel fend for themselves. Who cares? Let's get out of the way between Israel and Syria. We're, we're being kidnapped. We're being killed. Chicken out, just run. Let Israel have their own problems. They can take care of themselves. But Israel, who is supposed to be a friend of the United States and supposed to you know, be equal with the UN, the UN's just doing nothing about it. So on Wednesday, the UN confirmed that 21 observers had been detained by approximately 30 armed rebels on the Golan Heights and on the Syrian-Israeli border. The confirmation came in response to a video posted on the internet that portrayed men claiming to be Syrian rebels standing next to vehicles marked with, marked with the letters UN. So here we have a case where uh, Israel is asking, you know, you want peace and security, but you're taking the people who are supposed to be buffer zones between the nations who are of problems away. That doesn't make too much sense, does it? It makes a lot of sense when you connect, if you connect, Zechariah chapter 12, where the Lord told us in the last days they are going to be alone. Israel would be alone. All right, so there's another article as well, and this article, eight UN peacekeepers abandon the post near Syria, retreat to Israeli territory. Run to Israel. Run to safety. That's what's happening here. Israel knows how to take care of themselves, and the world is leaving Israel out to dry. And we know people who study the Bible and know God's word know that's exactly what's supposed to happen. The whole world is going to come against Israel. And so it, it becomes really an eye-opener when you know what the Lord has told you to look for and you start to see it. And not just a little bit of it, you're, we're seeing all of it. All of the prophecies that he said, start looking, look, and what, keep on the watch. And we're seeing it. Now, in relation to Egypt, all right, Egypt is one of those nations, or uh, excuse me, the Palestinians, uh, the Palestinians are marked in the prophecy, as I already showed you. Uh, the, the, the Hezbollah, they're part of the, the Palestinian factions. 
But we know from the prophecy that the Phoenicians, which are the modern-day Palestinians, they're going to join forces. Now, there's a new video that just came out that's showing you that uh, the Palestinians, like the like uh, now, like the Egyptians, are calling for the destruction of the nation of Israel. Palestinians have been doing this for a long time. Egypt was a major ally in the peace treaty that was established by uh, President Carter way back in 1979. And it's held all the way up until recently when Marcy became president. And his uh, political system was put into place. They're moving towards Sharia law. They're installing a new constitution with Sharia law. And they're calling for the destruction of Israel. Now, the Egypt who is mentioned in the Psalm 83. I'm going to play this video for you so that you can see what the Egyptian government is saying about the destruction of Israel. And then when you see this, please stop what you're doing. Go to the Bible and read Psalm 83. Egypt is there. And that's exactly what they're saying. It's a no-brainer. It's right here and it's right now. I'll read it for you in case you're you're having problems with your sight. I know that many of you that I've, I've talked to on the phone, that some of you are uh, impaired in that way. It says, Today we express the true will of the people when we say, <laughs> No to the aggression, no to the destruction of Lebanon. No to the destruction of Palestine. Yes to the destruction of Israel. We say no to the Arab impotence. It's the governments are incapable. If the governments are incapable, the peoples are ready. Open the gate of jihad for us. In other words, war. So we can unite with our brothers in Palestine and in Lebanon. In Psalm 83, you'll see the Phoenicians, the Palestinians. You will see the Lebanese. And you will see the Egyptians. That's exactly what they're saying here. Please. Listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. Receive it today because he's shown you things that were written thousands of years ago for a specific time and date. And that is us. Let me continue on here. So this is going on in Egypt, and what else can I say? I'm bringing you the news that shows you. It's like, here it is. Christ comes with all this information in his hands, and he drops it right in front of you. And he says, I'm showing you. What are you going to do with it? I've given it to my ambassadors to spread and to inform. I'm giving it to my watchers on the wall so that they will warn the people about my coming. I've promised you that I'm coming, and I'm giving you the information that shows you I am coming quickly. So what are you going to do with this information? That is my question to you. And I'm praying that today would be a good day that you understand. You need Christ in your life if you don't have him. Now look at this. March the 23rd, 2012. You're talking about Barack Obama being a really good friend of, of Israel. And again, I said... Are you going to do what the Lord says, or are you going to come against the Lord? And so let's see what the, the, the works of the administration of Barack Hussein Obama has done. All right, so here you go, March the 23rd. You got the CBS News here. Desperate 
Despite concerns, U.S. to give Egypt $1.5 billion. Now, you understand now, hopefully, that Egypt is marked in that Psalm 83 war to attack Israel. In other words, they're going to try to annihilate Israel, wipe them out, right? So you have a person who claims to be a Christian man through Barack Obama. He said that. And if he claims to be, and we know that Egypt is calling for the destruction of the nation of Israel, of which God said, if you align yourself with them, I mean, we see this in Zechariah and Joel that by splitting, the Joel chapter 3, verse 2, by splitting up the nation, if you align yourself with these people, you're the enemy of God. And if you're the enemy of God, you've fallen under the curse and you're going to be destroyed. All right? So, the enemy of God, the United States, is giving $1.5 billion back in 2012 to Egypt, who no doubt will use that funding to put into their arms for a future attack on Israel. Now, that was back in 2012. Now, let me show you the news for 2000, a March of 2013. All right? Keep in mind, let me go right back here. You have Egypt that's saying a short synapse. Egypt is saying destroy Israel. We have the United States arming, Israel, or arming uh, the Egyptians. Now, look at this. Washington, the Obama administration told Congress on Thursday it will waive democratic requirements to release up to $1.5 in aid to Egypt despite concerns that the country is backsliding on commitments it made to democrat or democratic governance and the rule of law. So even though that the nation of Egypt is not really showing democratic ways, the United States uh, waved it off and they gave them money anyway. I mean, they're, they're arming the enemy of Israel. Now let's move into current events. March the 3rd, which I didn't publicize this, but I wanted to bring it together so that you'll see what's going on here when it talks about who the United States is arming. This article shows us that Kerry announces $250 million in U.S. aid for Egypt. So not only did they give them $1.5 billion in 2012, now it's $250 million. And just so that you'll know that I'm not making this up, you could take a look at the New York Times, which came out on March the 3rd, 2013. And, of course, Ramad and Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is one of the nations that are also going to be in that attack. And it's not by coincidence that we're seeing part of this in the news. Secretary of State John Kerry announced Sunday that the United States would provide $250 million in assistance to Egypt after Egypt president promised to move ahead with negotiations with the International Monetary Fund over economic reforms. They were bought off, bought off by the power, the elite powers of the world. In a statement issue after a two-hour meeting with President Mohamed Marsi, Mr. Kerry said that the aid decision reflected Egypt's extreme needs and Mr. Marcy assurance that Egypt would reach an agreement with the IMF after more than a year of talks over 4.8 billion loan package. Now the statement issued by Mr. Kerry noted that he and Mr. Marcy had discussed the need to ensure the fairness of Egypt's coming elections, but it did not mention any specific political commitments the Egyptian president had made to receive the aid. So they, they're giving them this money no matter what. Now you're going to see the importance of this when we get back uh, to my website as it pops up. I want you to take a look at this headline here. We're supposed to be friends with Israel. 
Israel comes over, they're the only nation in the world that helps us get through Sandy. And yet Barack Obama is stabbing him in the back. If you think I'm kidding, look at this. While they're giving their enemies, the Israel's enemies, million or billions, as you can see, guess what they're doing to their friend? Take a look at this. Report. Move this up for a second. U.S. to cut aid to Israel by $150 million. Their friends are getting cut off. Israel's enemies are being poured in with billions of dollars. Does that make sense to you? Not at all. Unless you make the connection between Zechariah chapter 12. And we see, even though Obama is flapping his lips, he's no friend of Israel. He's no friend of God. He's going against the precepts of God. And when you do that, you put the entire nation in jeopardy. Look at this. An unconfirmed report says American foreign aid to Israel is going to be cut by $150 million. The figure is lower than what was expected. Although the cuts will be lower than expected, Israel nevertheless will feel the sting of the axe as America slashes its budget for fiscal 2013, sources said Thursday in as yet unconfirmed report. Instead of the originally expected $250 million cut, U.S. foreign aid to Israel will drop by $150 million, Washington sources allegedly told the finance minister. So, you know, if they can give, if they can give Egypt, you know, a billion and a half, and then they can give them all this other money that we just saw here, I mean, <laughs> come on here. It just goes to show you who the enemy is really is and the Israel's enemy is the United States although it only is a facade of friendship that's the truth because if Israel was a real friend of the United States guess what the majority of the funds wouldn't be going to an enemy who wants to destroy Israel it would be going to Israel to supply them with funds in arms or anything that they needed to protect the nation of Israel and protect those citizens who live in the promised land that God gave to Abraham. And Israel is going to spread out when they are attacked by the Psalm 83 war and they're going to encompass more land and they're going to win that war. And obviously the blessings will be coming on Israel. So in relation now, let me turn to, because we're talking about Egypt here, in Isaiah chapter 19, as you see on the screen here, Isaiah chapter 19, verses 1 through 4, this is a prophecy about in the last days, which is now why all of these things are happening, by the way, the Egyptians are going to come against themselves, fight against themselves, in part of the curse Part of the curse because they want to destroy Israel. I'm hoping that you're starting to see a pattern here. The nations who are coming against Israel saying that they're going to destroy him, guess what? They're being destroyed. They're bringing uh, havoc upon themselves. They're the ones that are coming down, not Israel. And so is the Egyptians are falling under a curse. They're fighting against themselves. They were rioting last year. They're rioting right now. And they're going to be given over to a cruel leader. And I've been warning that it appears that so far, the cruel leader that the prophecy talks about may be Muhammad Marsi. He's already installing Sharia law, enforcing Egypt is hunting down Christians. They're going into Christian churches. They're killing people. They're persecuting the Christians and persecuting anybody who doesn't go under Sharia law. This is out of Egypt. And so the United States is supporting this. It doesn't make sense, does it? But when you connect what God had showed us, it makes a lot of sense. And that's the wisdom that God gives us through his word. And we have that wisdom. And I want to impart the wisdom that the Lord has given us through this word in case you don't know about it. Now, Egypt's police protest against the Muslim Brotherhood. And the sources tell us in the headlines, the sources wounded as clashes renew in Egypt's port side. 
And so conflict is going on right now in Egypt. Take a look at this. Let me give you a, a little clip from a report that brought up about what's going on. Ambulances worked late, ferrying injured protesters to hospital. Some had been hit by shotgun pellets. Some showed the bullets they say had been fired at them. Others were overcome by tear gas. <clears throat> Even a soldier was caught up in the violence, brought in for treatment by helpful civilians. But it's not the army that protesters in Port Said are battling, it's the police. They're firing nerve gas at us, the dirty interior ministry. For hours, the city centre was filled with clouds of tear gas, while demonstrators set the governor's office alight with petrol bombs and the interior ministry next door in protest of what they say is excessive force used by riot police. They're firing this at us. Why? All we want is to avenge the martyrs. Look, look what they're firing at us. They People, do you understand what's happening here? Seriously. Do you understand what you're seeing? I'm praying. I'm asking God, Father, Lord Jesus Christ. Show them by your Holy Spirit, Egyptians against the Egyptians. This is what you said was going to happen in the last days. It's happening right now. Have snipers. Since the beginning of the year, more than 40 civilians have been killed in clashes in Port Said. But police are dying too. Since Sunday, three, two of them shot dead by unknown gunmen. Overshadowing it all, the events of one year ago, when 74 Cairo football fans died at the hands of Port Said fans in a match in the local stadium. Trials are ongoing, and so far 21 Port Said residents have been sentenced to death for their part in the violence. Many in this city are unhappy with the judicial process. Behind the antagonism towards the authorities, and specifically the police, lies a boiling resentment of President Morsi's government, which some residents of Port Said, but not all, view as illegitimate. There are some in this city who see Port Said as leading a counter-revolution. At the very least, they're trying to prove the government can't govern here. On Port Said's dark streets, protesters called for the army to take over running the city. And only two years after the people of Egypt toppled President Mubarak, they're calling again for the overthrow of the regime, the regime of President Morsi. So there you go. It's, it's, the Lord told us these things were going to happen. As a matter of fact, in the, in the book of Isaiah, the Lord told us that he was going to tell us the things that were happening before they happened. And that's what's going on. We're seeing them right now. And of course, the wars and the rumors of wars that the Lord was talking about, we see that in Revelation or uh, Matthew 24-7. I've quoted this many, many times here at my YouTube channel and also at my site. The wars. Why is Obama growing the DHS army by an armored vehicles? This was a question, a, a major question that was asked. And when you read the, the, the article on this, you'll see that they're, they're going out of their way, buying all these bullets, armors, and uh, for what? I mean, they're, they're pulling people out of, uh, they pulled them out of Iraq. Now they're pulling them out of Afghanistan. So why would they need more of these arms, more of these bullets? Well, there's thought is that they're getting ready for the economy to collapse and there's going to be a major revolution in the United States. Could this be part of the curse that's falling on America under the leadership of President Barack Hussein Obama? I'm not going to say that that's not the case. I don't know, but I do know that the curse has fallen. And the only way to get rid of it is to bless Israel. Because when you bless Israel, that nation who does that will be blessed. That's the word of the Lord. Now, a lot of you may be asking, how do I get saved? Just like we saw the jailer ask in the book of Acts, and you'll see that in Acts chapter 16, verses 30 and 31. And, you know, how do I get saved? I see all this, how do I get saved? Well, obviously, in the, in the book of Acts, what did, what did Paul tell them? And he brought, you know, this is what the scripture says, brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. 
In John 14, 6, Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now your profession of faith should be like the Ephesians. Or as we see in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, For grace you are saved through faith, and, and that not of yourselves, that it is a gift of God, not of your works, least any man should boast. In other words, God has given you this gift. I don't care how much work you do, you're never going to be able to pay for this gift. It was free. You can't do anything to earn it. God saved you in the worst state that you would ever be in. You're never going to be in a worse state that you were. Void of God's Holy Spirit. God, and you, I give you a whole list of scriptures here. If you want to know the Lord today, read these scriptures and tell the Lord that you believe it. Tell Him that today you received it. And Christ is going to write your name in the book of life, Revelation 3, 5, he who overcomes will, like them, be dressed in white, and I will never blot out their name in the book of life, but will acknowledge their name before my Father and his angels. And here, the book of Revelation, we see people coming out of the, revel out of the tribulation. Those people who don't take the mark of the beast, they're going to have their name written in the book of life. But we who are in the church age already have our names written in that book if we accept Jesus Christ. And I'm praying with all my heart that today you will give your life over to the Lord. And let me close with this, Revelation 3.20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Do you want to go home with your father and live in his mansion? You want to eat supper with your father for eternity? Today is that day. What are you waiting for? Christ is waiting for you to answer. God bless. This is Frank DeMora.